Thank you for joining us. My name is Lucy Sacco, and this is Master Artist Class, a program designed to introduce master artists from the late 19th and early 20th centuries by offering a brief lecture on the artist's lives and their painting styles, a segment with images of each master artist's work. And lastly, we will paint our own rendition of one of the featured artist's paintings. In today's episode, we will be introducing the father of Neo-Impressionism and the painting technique called pointillism, a process of using small dots with complementary colors to create the impression of another color. Today, we will be introducing George Seurat, born on December 2, 1859 in Paris, France. His father was a bailiff and his mother came from a prosperous family that produced several sculptors. His father was away in a neighboring town at a second home most of the time, while his mother raised the young Seurat in Paris with his older brother and sister. Seurat had a great interest in art as a boy and took lessons from a maternal uncle named Paul Homan a textile dealer and painter. His formal education began in 1875 at a local municipal art school. There he met Edmond Armand Jean, and together they enrolled at École de Beaux Art, a premier art school in Paris. Seurat spent most of his free time at the museums and libraries of Paris. He was greatly influenced by the book the Grammar of Painting and Engraving by Charles Blanc, and The Principles of Harmony and Contrast of Colors by Michel Jean Chabel. These books introduced Seurat to color theory and the science of optics, which became his primary focus and practice. At the April 1879 Fourth Impressionist Exhibition, Seurat saw, for the first time, a liberation from the traditional classical academic rules he had become accustomed to. Claude Monet and Camille Pissarro greatly influenced his experimentation with color. Later that same year, he was enlisted in the military and devoted his spare time to sketching fellow recruits, seascapes, and street scenes. In the following years, he expanded his knowledge of color theory and studied the painting style of Delacroix. He also read the book Modern Chromatics by Ogden Rude, which recommended that artists experiment with color contrast by juxtaposing small dots of color to see how they are blended by the human eye. Seurat first used this technique in his painting called The Bathers a depiction of workers relaxing by the Sun River. That painting was rejected by the jurors at a state-sponsored salon. Subsequently, he and several other artists formed their own society, enabling him to exhibit the bathers in the following June of 1884. It was there he met Paul Signac, who greatly influenced Seurat's technique. Two years later, Seurat displayed the painting Le Grand Jacques, painted in the pointillism style at the Eighth Impressionist Exhibition. Its visual effects of light and color, as well as the representation of different classes, established Seurat as a leader of the new avant-garde. This aroused great interest in his work and brought resounding reviews, along with the interest of the famed art dealer Paul Durant Rule, who exhibited Seurat's works in both Paris and New York. In 1889, Seurat traveled to Belgium, where he lived with a girlfriend named Madeleine Nobach. She gave birth to a son, though Seurat kept it a secret from his family and friends. He suddenly became ill on March 26, 1891, and died three days later, on March 29, 1891. Two weeks later, after his death, his young son died of a similar illness. 
He only lived to 31 years of age, though he left a lasting legacy of influential work. Many of these are exhibited at the Musée d'Orsay in Paris. They have left a significant impact on the world of art. Please view the upcoming segment filled with the vibrant and innovative works of the neo-impressionist master artist George Seurat. Enjoy. <laughs> So today, we're going to be painting the painting called The Woman in the Rope-Colored Skirt by George Seurat. Um, it's very complex. It looks like a simple scene, um, but there are approximately 16 or 18 colors. Um, I'm going to get going on this painting. Uh, it's going to take some time. I've already done it once. Um, it's going to take a little while. So I hope you enjoy this with me. Let's get to work. Today we're going to look at my beautiful colorful palette. We're going to be studying George Seurat, who really, um, 
he, everyone knows who Seurat is. He is a pointillism guy. <laughs> and I'm just going to get going here with a cross-hatching sort of brush stroke back and forth. I'm going to move my wrist back and forth. I've got a quarter inch flat head brush and it is going to take a beating at this, in this painting. It's really going to be tough. Uh, I'm going to put in one color at a time and of course there are shadows and we're going to have to have a long conversation today. Uh, I actually, on my visit to Paris, got to see several of his works. And I was looking at some photographs the other day on my home computer, and I found uh, lots of pictures of them at Musea, Musea d'Orsay. It was a fascinating place. There were lots of paintings there of all the master artists from that time era of the late 19th and early 20th centuries. Um, if you need a list of supplies, or you want to get a rendering, or you want to watch the video again, you can go to my website, masterartistclass.com, and there will be those things there for you. I know, I have a hard time getting my uh, supply list up <laughs> right away. I have to figure out what I've put in my paint and what recipes to give people. It's a little bit different than if I would teach you in person. If I taught you in person, then I would be bringing uh, the paint with me, premixed, and I would be giving, you, give it, giving it to you. Um, it's a lot different doing it virtually. And I know it's more difficult for you as well. And I apologize for that. The pandemic kind of uh, helped me to get excited about doing this virtually and on television. Um, I love teaching. And I love teaching about these artists because they made such a big difference in the art world. Lots of things came from their influence. And um, so pointillism is actually something that uses the complementary colors for shadows and uh, to create a different color, sort of. This grass has about four colors in it, four or five, maybe more. If I was Surat, then I'm probably putting more colors in there. Um, but we're only going to use four or five. So don't get discouraged. This is a very methodical and uh, therapeutic sort of painting. You want to be able to take your time, not worry too much about perfecting it. You know, it is paint, and you can, you do have the option of painting over a mistake. There really is no mistake in this painting. And actually, if you do make an uh, error or some what you consider to be an error, chances are, it's going to be a compliment to the painting. That's what Impressionism is. It's only the impression of, you know, it's the impression of something. That's what Impressionism is. Uh, you are just giving the impression. Up close, it's a mad mess. And then you back up 
and it's really cool. Really very uh, clear about what you're looking at. So Sarat only lived to be 31. And uh, I think that's very remarkable, the impact that he had on the art world. I mean, already his paintings were famous. Uh, of course, I think it was sort of, it was cool to be an artist back then. <laughs> I mean, I don't know, I think it's kind of cool now too. But I think a lot of times people just think you're not going to make enough money or whatever. And it was a real decision for me to go to art school. I, I love it. I just, it is my thing. I love it. It's what I'm good at. And, you know, a lot of times, as you can see, in this type of painting style, there is a science, an actual science to art and color and visual. There's a science to it. If you, in Impressionism, what they did was use the complementary color to create shadows and um, it was a breakthrough. It was a real breakthrough for them to start doing Impressionism because everything was so very uh, rigid, like the rules that uh, Surratt had gone to school for. The rules were... Uh, very rigid. You had to follow those rules or like he found out they weren't going to accept your painting in the state-sponsored salons in Paris. Uh, they're, you know, so frustrating for them probably after going to school for years and years and uh, so they made their own society really. And so they had the impression, the independence, society the independence. And they had their own ex exhibitions and their own style of painting. Now I'm using like a cobalt blue and light blue violet mixed together. The first color was uh, like a sap green, and that was mixed with a little bit of um, yellow. This isn't quite cobalt, but it is a blue. This is going to get very, you're going to hate my guts. <laughs> I really hope that you enjoy this painting. It's very therapeutic. Take a couple days to do it if you want. I mean, I did one today, earlier today. It took a little time. But, um, you know, uh, it's okay. Like, just take your time or just watch me do it. I, I'm really enjoying doing it. Honestly, it's fun. A lot of fun. Make sure your brush is really clean. You don't want to get mud. So make sure your brush, there's a sailboat back here. Kind of be careful when you're painting around that because it is a light color and uh, I just 
want to make sure that you can see the sailboat properly. And on the rendering, stuff gets kind of muddled because it's all, of course, dots of different color. So, Surat had an older brother and an older sister. I wonder what they thought of him. It was sad that he passed so young, but um, he had a son. That was his son, too, that uh, passed shortly after. Uh, I think that's really interesting. That they're together. Um, you really have to look at this. I am going to be stepping back a little bit sometimes because you really, really have to look at this carefully. I am just following the copy as best I can. And, you know, it's blurry. It's a little blurry. So if you need glasses um, or you can't see well, it's still okay to do this painting. You don't have to be very accurate or perfect. So the woman, I guess a rope colored skirt is like a pinky red color. <laughs> I thought rope was like a beige color, but uh, apparently it's got red highlights on it. I'm going back and forth here with my cross hatching. Balea, balayage. It's a different kind of uh, painting. Okay. So we put in the background first, as usual. And I am using one color at a time for now. I'm going to put in this little uh, beachy area here. And I, I think it's like a, there's lots of colors back here. So I'm just going to do it. If I see that color anywhere else, I'm going to use it. I see a little bit in her skirt. So, imagine, imagine being one of the first people to use this sort of technique. Okay, now I'm going to start adding some gold flecks into the grass area. I'm taking very short, uh, flat, I'm going different direction, kind of diagonal cross hatching, back and forth. There's no right or wrong. 
don't cover the whole thing. Like, don't like paint it in one solid color. Okay, make sure that you've got some of all the colors poking through. I'm still using the quarter inch flathead brush um, on this eight by ten rendering. Um, some of you might wonder, what on earth is a rendering? A rendering is another rendering is another name for a drawing. And I found that when I was teaching these classes, uh, it was really helpful to have some sort of a drawing. They're paintings, but you need to have a drawing. And I don't think many people are good at drawing. <laughs> we, you know, if you're an artist, yeah, you might be. I personally am not a very good drawer. I used to be, but I mean, not like this, not like this. So I create these renderings, and I have them printed up, and then we can just paint on them. And uh, you will be able to, too. So that's what a rendering is. I have uh, like a whole book of 12 different renderings and paintings. And um, that's what we're working on this series right now. Um, the people that I would work with, and I hope that some of you get a chance to do these paintings um, because they're, they're just so wonderful, so fun. You know, there's lots of things people can talk about, and art is a really good thing to talk about. A lot of um, conversations are not so pleasant, but art is a really fine conversation to have with people, and it's important. It's important because without art, how would we create engineering uh, type professions? What, how would we create? You have to have some artistic background in order to create things. And um, I mean, it's very obvious when there's no art in society. Art is a fun thing to have around. And, and it's important, too. It's not just fun. It's important. Everyone has to have their, uh, I mean, fashion, cars. You have to dr have a drawing of a car. You have to have every kind of uh, advertisement has art in it, every kind of uh, I mean, I just don't understand why there's such a, uh, oh well. <laughs> it's important. OK, so I get up there, and I start looking at this thing. <laughs> and it is intense. Really, I, that's all I can say is it's intense. So so far, we've got four colors down out of the 16. All right, let's keep going here. I'm going to start filling in some of the people. That way it'll make it a little easier. It'll make it more pleasant. You know, it's fun. It's supposed to be a fun thing. So I hope that you enjoy it. Man has a very long coat on, which is interesting. Looks like a, an overcoat of some sort. I'm going to cover the whole thing with a brown, oh, 
brown. <laughs> there's no brown in this. There's only like red, blue, and yellow. Red, blue, and yellow is the base of all of the colors that we're going to create. Red, red, blue, and yellow, just the primary colors. So right now, I have a little burnt sienna, which is made with red and uh, green. Green is made from blue and yellow. So you can make it. All you really need is red, blue, and yellow, and you can do this painting without buying a lot of paint. But I buy a lot of um, you know, pre-mixed paint and um, it's just easier for me because I do a lot of painting. But for you, you can get away without doing that. Okay, she's got kind of like a brown coat, a uh, burnt sienna coat on. And this lady over here, she's got a little bit of a burnt sienna dress on. Standing by a tree, it's a little uh, confusing here. I think I painted over the grass at her back, so I'm going to fix that right now. Imagine having the Sun River to go and relax by while you're at work. <laughs> I wouldn't mind that. Um, some of the dots are going to get smaller, so we'll use a smaller brush eventually. Now, I think I'm going to start adding in, uh, oh well, not yet, not yet. I'm using like a light violet, and that's up here. Pretty soon, we'll uh, start putting in the deeper tones that are going to create the shadows. So there's an impression of a woman standing down here. Some people standing up, impressions of people standing in the background. Okay, so I think I'm ready to start putting in some darker colors. So what I'm going to do is take a Prius blue and alizarin crimson. So those two colors are making a deep violet. A deep violet that we're going to start. The base of this whole painting is very uh, yellow, gold color. So this violet color deep violet we're going to start adding in is going to sort of balance out the golds and greens. And again, I'm using that hat cross hatching technique. We're going to go back in with a cobalt blue, and that'll make it a little brighter. It 
if you didn't quite mix the alizarin crimson and uh, Prius blue together very well, uh, it's okay because it's going to show up in dots of blue and red. Dots of blue and red will eventually look like violet. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to leave a little bit of the color unmixed so that I have a little bit of red here and there, a little bit of blue. And I think that's kind of what he did as well. Um, Surat. So. You don't have to press very hard. I wouldn't. You know, um, probably a better idea to uh, not press hard. Just go light. Just doing a little bit. I'm trying to move quickly because I only want to keep you for, I don't want to go over an hour for you. If you find that this is taking too long for you, take a break. Just take a break and, you know, it'll get easier. You can work back into it. Go back into the video. You can do it. I'm going to put some light blue violet in this water now. a little bit of cobalt blue in there. Okay. Let's start making these people a little bit more legible. Although they're very blurry. <laughs> they're sort of blurry. All right, the way we're going to make them more legible are we're going to start putting the shadows in. Okay, there's a man here. A little bit of a... There's not much white in this painting. There is just a dash, and then it's covered up so much that it becomes a different color. It's not, it's not going to be, no longer going to be white. But um, I'm going to go ahead and start using the mixture that creates the violet, the alizarin crimson and Prius blue. I'm going to start doing the shadows here. So this man's hat, it looks pretty solid. We're just going to paint that in. And then I'm going to start going down his jacket. Looks like such a warm, beautiful day there, even though they have overcoats on. Maybe it's, maybe it's a spring day. Maybe it is. Hmm. 
I'm going to start adding a little bit of blue, a little bit of red, both colors. So now the, the uh, burnt sienna color that we used for their clothing, now I'm using a blue, cobalt blue, for the shadow. I like how blurry it is. <laughs> Believe it or not, we're almost done. I know, I always say that, and then we're here for another 15 minutes. But I'm going to use a smaller brush now. I have an eighth inch flathead brush. I'm going to start using that. I'm going to do the woman's umbrella or parasol. There are some darker colors on the uh, parasol background. And there's some of this color in the rope colored skirt. <laughs> Interesting. Very sketchy. Now, I'm going to let that dry a little bit. I'm going to go over and put the white in on this woman's hair and this man's shirt. It's very, it's just a blob. A blob of paint here, a blob of paint there. <laughs> and then it starts getting a little bit more legible. I'm going to go over here, put the sailboat in. The faces are, they're in a shade. They're in a shadow, so they're like a purple color. They're mixed with, you can't decipher what is what, really. I mean, is this a hat on this woman's head? Or this one? They're not like everybody would want. I'm sure that people <laughs> that I've taught in the past would want to make the faces very visible, but they're not. They're not at all. They're just a blur. So, make this man's hat, straw hat. And it does have a lot of colors in it. It's not just a yellow hat. So I'm going to start putting some of this yellow gold color in here, lighter color, to brighten things up a little bit. We're almost done. I want to thank you for your patience. and uh, It's kind of fun. You know, you got to say. It's, it's a fun sort of 
painting to do. We have one more color in the grass besides this gold color. It's a deep color, a little bit deeper. All right, so we have like a pure, practically a pure sap green. So I'm going to put those little flecks in there, a little bit of fleck of deeper color. I'm going to have to back up because uh, it's very, very crazy up here. And you're going to feel probably a little overwhelmed when you're in the middle of this. You're going to feel maybe like, oh, it's a mess. I promise you, it is not going to be a mess. It's going to be absolutely gorgeous. With all these dots and dashes, if you could see the paintbrush, Marks, very beautiful. Okay, I think there's some, uh, like a, uh, I'm going to rinse my brush. I'm going to paint that rope skirt a little bit better. So, taking my mixture of, uh, Elizabeth. A little bit of violet. I'm back to the quarter inch. Uh, I'm going to start adding some flecks of violet in here. I can't believe how many colors are in this thing. And they look so beautiful. And I think this is a distant beach. And there are actually people on it. But I am just touching up some last-minute things. If you blend too many colors together, it'll get muddy. You know, you don't want that. You want to keep your colors vibrant. Okay, we got to do her little uh, 
parasol handle. I'm going to back up again. Okay, I got it. Now the trees, lastly, the trees are sort of uh, that, a peachy color. I'm going to put those in. And I'm using that burnt sienna color mixed with a little um, lighter color. You know, I think we're pretty good. I think we're done. What do you think? I mean, when I'm editing these, I, I'm looking at them thinking, I forgot that thing, or I missed that particular thing. And, uh, but I think we're done. Hmm. I have one thing left here. What's going on over here? A bunch of people over here. A couple people. And there's this man. And he's got. Okay, keep your colors pure. It's easy to miss things. It really is. But I think we did a great job. Oh, we didn't do the man's pants. We did not do this guy's pants, which aren't really pointless. They're just kind of. man's pants. Okay. Well, I think we're done. You have to know when to stop. <laughs> and, you know, if you become fatigued and you want to take a break and maybe work on it another time, you can. You can go to my website, masterartistclass.com, and you can look it up there. Or uh, you can look it up on YouTube, too, as well. Um, I want to thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. I enjoyed myself. I look forward to hearing from you. Um, have a good day, and so long.